there's different opinions about whether whether generative AI poses risks to these environments as opposed to contributes to the ability to to uh, uh, to prevent any types of, of 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 vulnerabilities and to mitigate those risks. So so I'm going to kind of combine those two topics and say, well, how can we? You know, where do you see you know these newer technologies like generative AI contributing? Or, or impacting to cloud strategy in general and, and establishing controls for, uh, I'll say, cybersecurity, but I'll also bundle compliance in there as well. And uh, and let me jump to uh, to uh, to Balaji to start that that last. Uh, that's, I think this is going to be our last. Uh, yeah. So I think yeah, exciting topic about generative AI is again I take as another example where. It's a huge innovation happening and presents challenges for security, but also opportunities. So I'll answer this in twofold and some of the things that we are doing, as well as there's aspect of generative AI being all parts of the organization, just like SaaS or other pieces, so very presents risk. So companies are really thinking about how to put guardrails of what is going in and out of the generative AI. This is something we really focus on as well but there's also a huge opportunity of generative ai being able to make sense of a lot of data that security has from logs and data point of view to really really crystallize and seeing what's happening because there is a huge data sprawl there's a huge amount of sprawl happening of code in the cloud it's very hard for security teams with just to solve with people so generative ai is going to help security teams analyze risk faster so i see this as an opportunity but it's also something very quickly becoming a risk for many companies on the sprawl that is going to happen with generative AI models. And companies have to think on both fronts. Uh, Chris, let's go to you uh, and then we'll go to Basan. I think companies have to really take a hard look at why they want um, these tools to be added into their environment, uh, AI and beyond um, IoT. Uh, I think it's great that we all want the fun new gadgets, right? I'm sure we're all surrounded by several of them right now in our own homes but for a business, do they really need them? Um, I think to farming really fast, um, in order for a small to mid sized farm to be able to maintain the ability to grow yields, they're going to need help from AI and robots. It helps with the labor workforce. They don't have to bring in people from other countries because as an example, the US doesn't want to work in farms. Um, and that will be really helpful for those particular industries. But do we really need it in other places in food production, let's say? Do you really need to have, I don't know, some particular fire suppression that's on IoT. Is that really something you need to monitor? If it is, great. If it isn't, why do you need it? I think they need to have these tough conversations rather than we want the cool new stuff and be able to say we're the innovative company. That's great. You can innovate later or you can innovate in slow ways, not like the whole fast let's go. It's the crawl and walk to run scenario as we've already said. Basam, well, why don't you share some of your, uh, your thoughts? Uh, on yeah, I, I think one area uh, to focus on with AI, generative AI is is great tool, but as just mentioned, it's, it's fun fun toy. Um, it can be dangerous. I think this is where data governance comes in uh, importantly is to make sure that uh, data is classified as AI generative AI is going through the data set. Make sure to avoid certain. So for uh, looking at your knowledge base, there are some things that can be uh, gleaned for answering questions for customers. So we don't want to uh, grab data that is sensitive. Um, something to look into. Um, from a, a general security, I think um, there are a few steps that to consider is we need to be more open in terms of when things occur. Uh, if we see that the uh, AI or any other system that's grabbing information is not supposed to, not to uh, you know, hide it and try to fix it, uh, to share it across the company and across other organizations where we see this issue. Um, also making sure that um, there's a cybersecurity review board, for example, um, that sees all these incidents and keeps track of them and resolves them to make sure they don't happen again. Um, there, are, there are several steps, but I don't want to be long-winded on this, but uh, several steps to make sure the data is secure and make make sure that everyone knows what the resolution is. Uh, so, Baya, you brought up both of those topics, both cybersecurity and generative AI. So, I mm -hmm. I am confident that you've got an opinion on this as well. <laughs> Absolutely. So. To what you said, David, I mean, what the way I think is that every organization, there is risk, but you have to adopt it. It's almost like right now, it's one of those things. If you don't adopt it, you're going to be left behind. It's it's a must have. It's not a nice to have anymore. That's one of the reasons I think we talk about cloud here. That is an area. It's a playground. The way I think of this is a playground. This is a constant. The, 
the problem with this thing is that it's going to change by the time you implement it a month two months later it's going to change again it's going to change it's going to change what a technology allow what is a place which allows us to do something like that cloud is a great place to experiment try new because it's evolving so fast and the cloud vendors are leading it and we got to learn leverage as many tools as possible to keep the customers at the highest level possible efficiency possible and uh, that's i think it's a must have in across our technologies the way i think of is that we got to improve it allows us to improve the operational efficiency it allows the provisioning efficiency for the customer the entire process and the last thing is that entire ecosystem efficiency this at the end of the day it all goes back to what's how what's helping the customer business bottom line right and ai is something we have to do it's going to become a must have for all yeah so roy let's 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 get you to wrap up the uh, the discussion here yeah yeah and uh, absolutely so I, I agree i agree with everybody everybody i think everybody said kind of like what are we all thinking i think generally speaking right the the ai is is out of the lamp like you're not going to put that genie back in um honestly today we're just scratching the surface it's where the internet was in in the early 60s we're just kind of figuring out what it is. I think everybody's gotten really, really excited about what the potential is. And we're starting to explore that. And I think in the next few years, we're going to see a lot more AI getting embedded in everything that we do in all of our tools. Uh, I think the biggest problem with AI, if you compare it to other technologies to sort of change our lives, is that it's a black box, right? When the internet came, okay, cool. Like I can kind of see and understand what's going on with, with an AI model I have no idea, right? Unless you're a data scientist or, you know, an engineer who can unpack it and really understand it. Like, it's really, really hard to understand what's going on. So I think transparency is going to be huge, you know, depending on on people reviewing it and panels and, and you know, humans doing the work. I don't think it's scalable, sustainable, whether we want it or not, people are going to have Gen AI embedded in everything and we won't be able to approve all those tools just like we tried to do back in, you know, in, in the 90s with, you know, software being added to an enterprise needs to be approved by security and other folks. Eventually, they just gave up, right? Um, and I think it's going to happen now too with with Gen AI. It's going to be embedded in so much that you just you can't you just can't physically evaluate everything. And it's really about us vendors and the Gen AI vendors and all these companies really being open about what they're doing and adding transparency capabilities to their models. I'm looking at OpenAI. I'm looking at Cohere and, and AWS and all these companies who are building these massive models. Give me a window. Give me a window into what you're doing and what the model is doing. Give me tools to, to audit and to be able to extract things and say, like, I want to exclude that piece of content or I want to attribute that piece of content to something. I think we need to spend a lot of time on building those type of transparency and, and auditing capabilities into these models because we're not going to stop the adoption. 